We will start here momentarily. And everybody, thank you for joining the ACA Small Business Bootcamp at, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for this Tuesday, January 11th. We're excited to have you with us today. Um, we got a great session plan. I'm Robert Theobald, the Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services at the Arizona Commerce Authority. As we like to do when we start these boot camps, for those that are new, we like to start by thanking all our community partners. We have over 140 community partners from throughout the state that uh, participate in the boot camp sessions, and we're excited to have them spend their time, their effort, and their expertise and share that with our audience. So the Small Business Boot Camp is designed to help small businesses work through the COVID crisis and be stronger than ever. It is a statewide initiative supported by all of our community partners. And not only is it the webinar that in 2022 we are doing every Tuesday at 9 a.m., it is a resource collective and a content library. And then for 2022, we've got some updates and some changes. As I mentioned, we are doing the webinars every Tuesday at 9 a.m. And then every month we'll have at least one workshop as part of a workshop series with our community partners. <clears throat> and uh, we may have more than once a month, but uh, we're gonna have those workshops to help support businesses uh, with those workshops of different topics. Um, so for example, at the end of the month, uh, our, our first workshop will be in partnership with SCORE Phoenix and it will be an in-person only event in Mesa on the ABCs of starting a business. Uh, so if you're looking to start a business in 2022, it's a no cost workshop uh, to attend. Um, and the information is on our bootcamp website. So as I mentioned, we have a content library. This is a great uh, piece that we've put together over the past year and a half of doing boot camps. Uh, we record all the sessions and we have over 180 recorded webinars and presentations that we have available to you at no cost on the content library. Um, you can see on the screen under the archive section, we are also working to update our website and have a filterable option so you can filter from various topics and find the boot camps uh, via those topic uh, sorting. So we're real excited about that. And you can go back and view these at any time. You can share the links with uh, your friends or business partners or acquaintances that may benefit from watching one of our sessions. We also like to talk about a couple of websites that are still very relevant. Uh, the state put together for everything COVID-19 information resources, ArizonaTogether.org. And then the Arizona Commerce Authority put together a COVID business resources website at azcommerce.com forward slash COVID-19. And on this page, you can find additional business guidance, financial information, financial resources, and other uh, business related items to help any size business. <clears throat> the ACA also has a number of programs that small businesses can leverage. Our small business services, our workforce division, and our Arizona MEP, our Manufacturing Extension Partnership. These uh, teams work to help support small businesses and their needs. Um, so please reach out if you have something you need to, to address in those areas. Additionally, a lot of small businesses are looking to grow and expand or people are looking to start new businesses and our small business checklist can help identify the commonly requested licensing, registration and compliance needs at the local, state and federal level. So if you're a small business looking to expand into other communities, you may want to jump on there and check out the requirements of doing business in that community. If they're going to require you to add another business license for, for that community or not. Um, or if you're going to be branching out across state lines, there may be some things you need to do. Uh, so small business checklist can help you identify those. Um, or if you're starting, identify what you need to do as you get started to make sure everything is neat. As we transition to our small business updates, um, just to note that the EIDL program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program has closed. Um, so they are not taking any new applications. Uh, however, Goodyear, Superior, Phoenix have grants available for small businesses. We're going to post the links to all this information in the chat uh, so you can click and, and, and go to it. Um, also, Maricopa County has a small business resilience program. That is both a grant and a loan program along with technical assistance. 
Uh, so it's a really, really cool program. And then we're going to post a link that of an article I found that lists a lot of other um, programs and grants that are available. These grants are not, they're, they're competitive grants and there's a very limited number of them. Um, but it's one of those things where if you don't apply, you, you can't win it. So some of you may be interested in applying for some of those grants. With that, um, <clears throat> we want to announce that we are currently in the process, the application process for our small business digital academy. And this is a new program for Arizona. Uh, we've been working on it last year. We've done five cohorts. This is our sixth and we're fine tuning as we go, but it's a six week program to designed to help small businesses scale their online uh, presence and build their digital capacity. There's no cost uh, to be part of it. It is a hybrid learning structure. So there's both live sessions and online sessions or online lessons. Um, it also connects you with some mentors in that. So you can check out the link at the bottom of the page or we'll post it in the chat. Um, but again, applications are open. It's a, it's a really fun course. I enjoy being part of it. Faith on our team runs that program and she does a phenomenal job with it. Um, so if you are interested, apply or reach out to us and we can give you more details. So with that, let's look at some of the upcoming sessions. Next week, we have post-pandemic conflict resolution. Uh, we're really excited about this. We've got our experts from the Arizona State University, Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law are gonna share some conflict resolution uh, information um, and how to deal with it online, uh, which is a big part. And then the following Tuesday, the ultimate guide to starting your business. Uh, this is with the attorneys from Spencer Fain. They're gonna share some important information as you're starting your business, what type of uh, things are, are good to do and not to do. Um, and then starting in February, on February 1st and 8th, we've got a two part series actionable ideas for business owners. Uh, part one and part two, we're really excited about that. All these are with new presenters to the boot camp, so we're really excited to, to hear them and, and get their new information. So please join us for those. Um, all the registration is open for those so you can get registered. And with that, we're gonna jump into today's sessions. We have a new presenter with us today. We have Christina Ching. Uh, Christina has done a lot of stuff. I'll let you read her her bio there, but uh, she works with Moonshot up in Flagstaff, which is a business incubator up there, is part of the uh, NAU, Northern Arizona University. Uh, she's worked for Gore. She has her own businesses. Um, she has a legal background. She's an entrepreneur. Uh, so really excited to have her with us today. Um, so Christina, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and turn the time over to you. Great. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Let me get my screen going here. Why she's pulling that up. If you we're going to interact some through the chat. And then if you have questions at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q and a box. If you click on that, you can type your questions in there and we'll get to them. But uh, screen looks good, Christina. So it's all yours. Great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here. I thank the ACA for having us here. Um, we are going to be talking about the five P's of your business. And so let's see, let's get moving here. Introduction, Robert already did that. So I'm Christina Chang. You can call me Tina as well. Uh, I am up here in Flagstaff working with Moonshot. I also have a life coaching, business coaching uh business, as well as a fitness studio in Scottsdale. I used to be the commercial counsel for Gore's uh, medical products division. And I just love working with entrepreneurs. So I'm really happy for you to be here. So let's get moving here. We really want to make sure you are ready with your business, whether you're starting out now and you just have an idea or you are already getting and going and uh, you got to fine tune what you're doing. So I want to make sure you have a piece of paper and a pen. This is going to be, uh, I want you to really be thinking about things and um, reflecting and writing things down. Okay. So the first five, the five P's. So it's going to be the product or the problem. You're going to have your purpose, people, promotion, 
and planning. So those are our five P's and we'll go, get into each one, of course. But to start, I wanted to just kind of, you can just go into the chat and just briefly tell me, you know, what's your name, what's your business, um, what's your product, and then which P resonates with you today. So if we could just have everybody kind of go into the chat and just quickly type something in there. I'd love to hear what exactly you got, where you guys are in your business. Oh yes, sorry, here, I'll put it back up. If I can get it to go, there you go. All right, voiceover artist, hi Don, hi Tony. A moving business, promotion, a wellness coach, public speaker, awesome. Mark, photography. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Private investigator, video games. Wow, there's so many things here. Text-based promotions, construction, growing architecture and planning firm. Wow, there's so many things here. Water filter system. Okay, it's going so fast. Realtor planning. Okay, thank you so much for sharing, everybody. Keep going, keep going. Talk the difference, you know, all the different types of businesses that are on. It's exciting to, to, to see all what I think you guys are doing. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, exactly. I love, I love it. Security software, nonprofit consultant marketing. Fantastic. Hey, Craig. Hey, Sandy Test Promotion. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing here. Conscious gear. Loan signing. Okay, great. I mean, there's so many of you. Um, so just to keep us moving here, I am going to healthcare training. Wow, I love seeing all this. Okay, thank you so much. Keep, I mean, keep going. I'm not, I see you, I see you. So let's start with the product and the problem. Now, a lot of you, it sounds like you already have your ideas, but let's kind of drill down in there. Okay, so... So it's really important to think about what product or service you're selling, obviously, right? So um, even if you haven't started your business yet, you really want to narrow it down and make sure you, you know in your head exactly what you're selling. So if you say you're, you're going to be a consultant, what type of consultant are you, are you right? Um, so be really clear and concise about what you are selling, whether it's a product or a service. And, you know, one of the big things is what do you really care about, right? Is, and is there a need in the market? So I really love the ocean and um, I work here in Arizona. And so if I were trying to sell something with respect to the ocean, people may not really want to buy it here in Arizona because we're landlocked. So, um, you know, one of the biggest things to think about is what sucks in your world and does it suck for a lot of people? Right. And so that's where you can kind of think. And that's where a lot of people come from uh, creating their business. Right. And then how do you solve that problem? So is it curing a pain point? And you really need that clarity. So those of you who already put in the chat. Right. So let's think about what is the problem you're solving? So whatever your business is, what is that problem that you're solving? I want you to be able to to write that down. If you want to share it in the chat, please do. So cleaning services, that's the last one we have here in the chat, cleaning services. So Sativa, what is um, the problem, right? Are you? Is it cleaning houses? Is it residential? Is it commercial? Um, does it have to do with COVID, right? Um, what? Let's try to narrow it down and clarify. People need to move from California to Arizona. Yeah. They're all here. <laughs> Houses for now. Good, good, good. Okay. Anybody else? So really, whatever problem you want to solve, that's going to lead us into what we're doing next, right? But we want to really make sure we're not being super general, okay? Low inventory in homes, skin cancer. Wow, that's great. Yeah, prevention. Good, good. Okay, I hope everybody's writing this down, right? Even if you, you have your business going, do you have a problem that you're solving? 
do you have it clear what your pain point is for your customers? Because you need to need to have the customers know why they're going to buy it from you. Okay. And so I think I've gone through my slide without clicking. So what's the problem you're solving? What is the value you're providing? So again, why is our your customer going to buy from you? Overwhelmed, painful women's shoes. Yeah, I can I can relate to that for sure. <laughs> Portraits. And what is the pain you're alleviating? Right. So these are all questions you should be asking yourself. And then the next one is what difference does your product or service make in the life of your customers? Again, so it's not, it's more than you just having a business and having a business idea, but it's really connecting to what your customer really wants, what pain you're alleviating, what value you're providing, and why are they going to buy from you as opposed to somebody else? Process of forming a small business. Yep, yep. Okay, everybody write down all of that on their, in their notebooks. Okay, so that's the first P. The next P is the purpose, the why. Okay, so resolving fraud. I'm gonna keep looking at the chats as I go. Wow, that's awesome, fraud. Okay, so now going kind of inward to you, what is your purpose? And what is the emotional reason that you're bringing this to the world? Okay, if you, so it's your why. How will the results impact your life and your customers? And what is the why that backs up your what? Again, so if you don't have a really strong why that you're doing this, then when things get really hard, like how many of you were doing this in, during COVID, right? If it was, if it becomes really hard, if you don't have a really good purpose and why you're doing this, you may just get frustrated or bored or you may just give up, right? So that's why it's really important to have a business that really resonates with you and your purpose because you want to have your purpose and your passion pull you through the challenges because being an entrepreneur and a business owner is so hard. It's so frustrating. It is not the easiest thing in the world. In fact, it's one of the hardest things. So again, think really, really hard about what your purpose is and why you want this to happen. And is it something that you want to do for like 10 years, right? Um, do you love it so much that you're willing to do whatever it is? And if somebody keeps telling you, no, 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 you're going to keep going. So what does success look like for your business? What does it look like? Again, you need to be really clear in your vision so you can stay on track and not get, get distracted. So I challenge you to write down what your purpose is. Why are you doing this? And maybe it's really personal because you had that problem. And so you're solving it for others. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Mark, 10 years behind in the digital environment, too costly to upgrade. Okay, that's frustrating, yep. Nice, nice. Yeah, so so usually it's something that you went through, right? And it's so hard. So, you know, for example, for me, Actually, um, you know, for my fitness studio, everybody has a hard time getting fit because, you know, you never want to go to the studio and whatever. But, you know, I, I was going through a hard time in my life and I did Kung Fu in our niece and I went into a, um, a martial arts studio, which not everybody's going to do. It's gross. It's kind of sweaty. For those of you who are martial artists, you know, it's 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 not a welcoming environment. And so, you know, making boxing and kickboxing something that is inviting and fun, but then everybody gets to like punch bags and get fit while you are letting all your stress out. It's sneaky cardio is what I call it. Um, so that's, that was my why for that particular um, business. So create an environment to capture a simple and fun portrait. That went for, yep. Love it. Love it. Okay. I'm so glad that you all are reflecting on this because it's super important. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Who's... Two quotes. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Exactly. That's all of you, all of the business owners. Okay. I hope you don't hear my dogs having a fight outside. 
All right, people, the who. So this is really important as well. I mean, obviously everything is important here today. Mm, people. So who is your ideal consumer persona? And I want you to start small and clarify. Now, all of us really want to say as a business owner, I want to help everybody because everybody can use this. I don't want to narrow it down. That is number one mistake. So you really need to narrow down who your customer is. Okay. Now you can start off with demographics. You could say, all right, I'm going to, I'm, my focus is 40 year old men and women who live in the Scottsdale area and they need to work out two times a week or they shop two times online. Okay, so that could be your demographics. But you need more than that, right? You need more than that. You need to expand and you need to think, what is their main goal? So, okay, I've got the 40 year old men and women and I've got, um, you know, they live in Scottsdale, they shop online twice, two times a week, but what's their main goal? So what's their main goal? Their main goal is to start their own business. Their main goal is to get a, a headshot. Their main goal is to, um, you know, what other things were in here? I already forgot, own a new home. Um, so what is their main goal? And then the next thing to think about is what is their main barrier that's stopping them from even getting there, okay? So what is the major barrier stopping them? So again, I'm gonna use my example for fitness studios. What is your main barrier, right? I don't have enough time. I'm too tired. I work all day, right? Those are their major barriers that's stopping them. So I want you to really think about and write this down. Okay, here's my consumer, my, my ideal consumer, Here's their demographics, age, address, you know, whether it's around the country, whatever it is. But then what is their main goal and what is the problem, the barrier that's stopping them? Because now you're identifying what um, problem they're going to try to overcome. And that's going to help you try to get those customers, right? Because now you understand them. And one of the biggest things is to think about real people. Like think about yourself. Think about your friends, your neighbors, the people you run into. I want you to interview real people. I want you to go out there and find your consumer and ask them, hey, is this your goal? And what's stopping you from doing it? Maybe it's the cost, maybe it's too far away, you know, whatever it is. Um, so we don't wanna be, again, you can see the theme is to be clarifying and drilling down into what everything is for your business. And so right now for people, I want you to go out and interview real people and I want you to keep an open mind. So another thing, us as entrepreneurs, right? We have this great idea. I am gonna change the world and I'm gonna help everybody. Well, yeah, I think you will eventually. But again, when you're starting out, you need to start small. So I want you to keep an open mind and ask questions to real people. Do surveys. Maybe you already have an email list. Send out a survey. But keep an open mind because you may already have your own biases in your mind of who you want to help and who you think needs your help and what those problems you think they have. That's all in your mind. But is, is that a reality for your consumers? Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Mm hmm. So I hope you're all writing this down. Okay, we're going on to the next P, promotion. So now this gets into kind of the marketing. So number one, now you know your consumer base, right? You have your, your um, product and your problem. You have your purpose, you know why you wanna do this and why you wanna help everybody. Now we have our consumer persona that you've already interviewed. You know exactly what they're thinking. You know exactly why they're not buying from all of everybody else who's the, out there. And now we want to know why they're going to buy from you. So, of course, you got to do your research. Competitive landscape, right? Who's out there that's already doing this? And what are they doing? And check out their ads. Check out their Instagram. Check out their Facebook. 
Um, see, you know, do you think it's good? Do you think it's hitting those consumers that you've already interviewed? And what makes you different? Okay, so how are you going to differentiate your product and your services against the competition out there? Okay. Are there gaps? Like, is there something missing when you see and see something? Are you thinking, yeah, I didn't like that. I think I would do it differently. And then the next question is, how will you get your idea to your consumers, right? Are you, is your business direct to consumer? Are you doing wholesale? Are you doing subscriptions, right? So how are you getting out there? 25,000 agents in the Valley and 5,000, yeah. Real estate is, is a tough, tough business. Okay, um, how will you get it out there? And then what will your message be to your potential customers, okay? Um, and when you get to them, are you doing it by paid ads? Are you doing emails if you have that email list? Are you doing cold calls, telemarketing? Are you doing social media, Instagram, Facebook? Are you doing flyers? Are you going out B2B? You know, giving everybody, are you finding partners? Um, free press? There's a, we could do a whole webinar probably on just how to get, get on the news. Do you have your own website? How are you driving consumers to your website? Okay. And then the good thing is, you know, your message equals your values equals your brand. So how many of you have been looking at the competitive landscape and you see a message and you think eh, that's a little cheesy or it's not something I would have done. I don't like the way, is it really resonating with your consumer that you are, are looking at? Um, it's really going to come down to your values and your brand. How do you want your brand to look? How do you want that website to look? How do you want that messaging on Instagram to look? Right. So you're going to have to really look at what your message is. Make sure it's reflecting your values. Okay and your brand. So is it powerful? Is it friendly? Is it inviting? The colors make a difference, right? Okay. Is this resonating with everybody? I'm not used to having like silence <laughs> as I talk. So thank you so much. I appreciate everybody being here. Okay, thank you, Julie. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, I'm going a little quick here so um, that we could have time for the Q&A as well. All right, so planning. So planning really is identifying the P you want to work on to move your business forward. I know there are so many moving parts in your business right now. You probably are just all over the place and you need to organize yourself. And I'm hoping that this will help you kind of narrow down where you need some work. And maybe you need work on every single P and that's not a big deal. I mean, we all have to work on our business every single day. Just because you come up with a message or your website doesn't mean you, get, you can't change it in a week after you do your interviews with your consumers and your ideal consumer personas, you may change everything, right? So it's, it's an organic process, as you know, right? As you change, you need to be able to pivot, as you know. So. So I want you to identify the P that you want to work on to move your business for, forward. Is it your product and problem? Like, is it the what? Do you need to narrow it down more? Is it too general, right? Is it something that is really solving a problem for consumers? I don't know how many of you watch Shark Tank. I love watching Shark Tank because number one, I can't understand how I can never think of these ideas. But number two, it's like sometimes they, somebody proposes a, a, a product and you think that is the craziest thing ever. And then they, they invest in it, right? So it's so interesting, but it really is what do people need and what will people want? So is it your product or problem or is it your purpose? Do you really need to dig down and say, okay, do I really love this? Can I keep working on this for like 10 years, right? Literally 10 years. If it's something that's just, you know, yeah, I kind of like it and I, I just want to work on it for a couple months, that is not going to drive you. I mean, I'd say I'm not going to discourage you from doing it, but I mean, all of you know, it's hard running a business and trying to get customers every single day um, and possibly not making any profit for a couple of years. So it's really got to be something that you feel purposeful. 
Thank you, Julie. Yeah. So yeah, if everybody could just put in the chat, what P is resonating with them right now that they feel like you need to work on right now. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't work on other ones. So purpose and then people, right? Have you really identified who your ideal consumer is? Again, are you being really general? Are you thinking, okay, I'm going to put this awesome idea out and everyone's going to come flocking to it. You know, even in my fitness studio, it is, I have to narrow down who I want to target. Um, is it moms? I got to go find the moms clubs and hit them, right? Where are they hanging out? Where are they shopping? I need to go there to get them to see the fitness studio, right? So you really need to drill down there. Yeah, yeah. People's resonate promotion. What if your product and service is so wide? So Mark, that's where you really have to think, okay? A product can be, and your service can be really wide, but who do you want to focus on, okay? So who do you want to focus on first? Again, yeah. I mean, you can think about fitness, fitness, and I'm just using fitness because I mean, that's just, I have nobody to talk to here. <laughs> so fitness is super general, right? Everybody can do it. You can do CrossFit, you can do boxing, you can do, you know, Pilates and yoga. I mean, it's so general, but who do I want to help? I want to help the women who are trying to get their bodies back after having three kids, because that was me. And I want them to do boxing, kickboxing, because it's empowering and it's sneaky cardio because I hate cardio. So you see how I'm narrowing it down. So um, that's where for the product and service, you really need to, to kind of look at that. People, yep, yep, planning. Okay. And then promotion. So your marketing, what does your marketing look like? Do you have, do you even have a website? Are you on social media? I'm going to tell you right now, I hate social media, but a year ago, I had to figure it out. And that's where everybody comes. And that's like the new advertising. Like not very many people go to websites anymore. Uh, maybe it's more of a research thing when you do a website. Um, like you still need a website, obviously. But anyway, so what does your marketing look like? Is it working? And you know, it takes, they say the average at least nine hits for somebody to actually take action. And so if I'm trying to get somebody into my fitness studio, I need they need to see it nine times before they'll even think about it. So maybe they see an ad on Facebook. Maybe they see an ad on Instagram. Maybe they see a flyer at Starbucks. And then they see, I mean, do you see that? That's only four, right? Then they need to see. So because now your consumer is going, okay, I just saw this again. Maybe... Maybe I should call them. Maybe it's not. I've, I heard about that before. Or a friend tells them about it, right? So you need to throw everything out there on your marketing. Okay. And then you're planning. 26 hits the, yeah, it probably is 26. I mean, it's a lot. You can hear nine. You can hear, it's probably like, it's just a lot. And like, think about your own self, right? Do you see something once and then you, and then you do it? Not typically, right? Usually you have to see it at least a few times before. Fresh new ways. Um, I'd say no, I wouldn't list your website and social here. This is more of a informational webinar, um, but thank you, appreciate that. Okay, so everybody has their planning. Um, okay, I know I went really fast here. Now I want you to, now that you identified the P, I want you to list three to-dos, okay? And when you want to have them complete. You need to write this down. I don't want you just thinking about it in your head. Write it down. So three to-dos, what are you going to do? Okay, so if, if people is the one, right? What are the three to-dos? I am going to sit down and identify what the problems are, their um, goals and their barriers. I am going to go and talk to five people, by next week or 10 people or whatever, however many. And then my third one is I am going to um, send out a survey. I'm gonna get a list on my email and send out a survey, okay? Um, everybody got their three to-dos going? Okay. 
Uh, I, Robert, I hope I went super fast. So I, we could just, uh, does everybody want Q and A or is, does anybody want any more information on something? Um, promotion suggestions. Robert. Yes. On a couple of people, if you'd like to come in and, and talk about your three to do's or you're needing some help on that, um, post in the chat and we'll make you live. Uh, we'll bring you on and we can talk about it with Christine. Okay. Well, here, Evie, Evie Thompson just asked, can you give promotion suggestions? All right, I'm going to find you on here, Evie, and we're going to, if you're okay, we'll bring in a lot of you to talk. Um, all right, Evie. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Hi, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for bringing me on. Um, yeah, so I was just wondering if you can give some um, promotion suggestions, uh, like the three to do's. Um, I have a photography business that we are renting out um, a photography studio okay. um, for photographers. And um, we are just completed um, the studio. We are ready to open and launch. And uh, we're working on our website, but it's not looking so good. And we're not really understanding how to promote on um, primarily our customers on Instagram. And so we're not really sure what to do, how to tackle Instagram. Uh, for right. marketing. Okay. So what are you doing now? You just, are you just working on your website? Have you done any promotion? We have not done any promotion. So okay. We're working on our website. We've, um, we're looking for our, our CRM so that we can start our lead management. Um, and then we are, we just set up um, a scheduling calendar so that we can put that link onto our website and um, add those pages. Okay. So there's a lot of things here, right? So have you already identified who your consumer is? Yeah. So it's um, primarily photographers and then some um, videographers. And then those are our two primary, but then sometimes there are like um, designers that are looking for, um, they'll book the space and then they'll hire their photographer and come in and um, shoot like their new line of products or whatever. Um, so those can be some of our customers, but the majority will be the photographers and videographers. Okay. So I think what you would do, right? Number one would probably be your web, I mean, I'll your website would be long-term, right? Because it's taking time for you to get that going. But short-term, those photographers and videographers, where are they? How do you find them? Um, do you already have a list of them? No. Okay. We don't. So I'd say number one is get a list of photographers and videographers that you want to reach out to, right? They don't even know that you exist. Right. So why not make a list of them and give them a call and say, hey, or have a flyer and or find their email or reach out to them and say, Hey, we have this space that you could use. And, you know, do you have a promotion or a sale or, you know, some kind of promotion grand opening kind of thing you could, you could um, offer that. Right. Yeah. We've been thought, uh, thinking about that. We haven't narrowed something down just yet. We're looking to try to launch by the end of February. So um that yeah. would be definitely trying to get a, a promotion for our um, grand opening. We were thinking yeah. of doing an event or something and um, bringing in a model um, that then the photographers could come in, they could shoot with the model um, and do just, they get like so many times, so much time to shoot um, like 30 minutes or something with that model and kind of get the feel of the space and the equipment that we offer um, as that grand opening. There you go. So I would call that a pre-launch, right? So getting ready for your grand opening, what are you going to do during pre-launch? I'm going to identify the photographers and videographers. I'm going to identify what my promotion is, and I'm going to invite them all in for my grand opening. So you're going to try and get as many people into this grand opening as possible, right? Build the hype. And so your Instagram would be doing the same thing. It's like, here we are, you know, do you need a space? Or I don't even know. I don't even know how you do it, but right. Do you need a space for this, this, and this, right? Does anybody do this um, in your space already? Yes, there, we've done a competition survey um, for the competition that's around. 
So we've been able to see what they offer, okay. what their prices are, where they're located, those type of things. Do you follow them on Instagram? Um, I'd have to ask. My husband um, manages the Instagram page, so I'm not sure right. if, if we do. So everyone, I would follow your competitors on Instagram, see what they're doing and either copy them. I mean, it's not copyrighted when they write videos and they have post pictures and promotions and make it better, right? Again, it's your brand, it's your values. See how they're doing it and make it to fit yours and make it even better. Do you see? So, and we can, again, we have a whole class on this, but Instagram, right? You'd say on Mondays, I'm going to do this type of post. On Tuesday, I'm going to do a, a photo um, examples of what people are doing in our studio. You know, on, on Wednesdays, or you can decide to just two days a week or whatever it is, right? So just follow your competitors on Instagram and see what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. Also, Evia, you're like in your phase where you're at, you're actually the ideal candidate for that uh, digital academy of ours. Yeah, I just signed up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, up. good. Another thing um, is because you're targeting photographers that are, you're targeting other businesses, LinkedIn might actually be better than Instagram. Mm, okay. Um, or a good start. So I just, I, while we were, you were talking, I went into uh, to LinkedIn and just searched Arizona photographers and, and it pulled up a number of them and you can connect, you can message. Um, so depending on your experience of LinkedIn, that may be a, a way okay. to, to get to the photographers. Um, you may also, you know, an idea is when they do the, the bridal shows, uh -huh. wedding shows, is go there and hit up those photographers that are there to let them know that you have studio space. Mm, okay. Because they, a lot of them may not have studios and mm -hmm. they need the best space. So kind of thinking outside the box of where are the photographers going to be that would benefit from knowing about my space and, and booking time. And, and I like what Christina said is, you know, that personal phone call might be more effective than trying to reach them on social at this stage. Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah, I like that. that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there's a lot of much. suggestions in the chat. So I would say check in there, everybody. Thank you so much for offering um, ideas for Evie. Okay, does anybody have a question on something other than promotion? Maybe we can hit another P. Yeah, anybody else want to come on and ask uh, a good walk through theirs? Please, uh, please let us know and we'll unmute you. You can even raise your hand. I'm not sure how to scroll through the chat that quickly. <laughs> or any questions, questions? Oh, there's the Q&A. Any resources? I think Robert, you and Faith could probably help Victoria with the planning resources. Mm -hmm. um, Let, let's jump into the, the Q&A. We'll click on the Q&A and we have two questions in there, so. How about, uh, how about Kay? Kay Urocco? Yeah. A question about um, wanting to serve a particular consumer, but right now consumers are different and their problem is different than the problem you wanted to solve. Kay, can we bring Kay on? Yeah, let me find her. Please. Oh, you don't have audio set up. Okay. So I guess that might be difficult then. Um, do you persist to try to find consumers that you want or do you pivot your business to serve the people who have found you? So I'm not sure. I don't know what your business is. Um, but I think it depends, right? Again, on your purpose and your why. You know, just because consumers are finding you, is that something you want to do? If it's something you want to do and it's still, it still is resonating with you, with your purpose and your why, then yeah, absolutely. We all have to pivot, right? And you could pivot to those consumers first and maybe expand to the next to the to your next ones, right? So 
Um, what we don't want to do is do something you don't want to be doing, right? Just because people are asking you to do it. I'm hoping that makes sense. Okay, are there any other questions, thoughts? I love that everybody's providing um, feedback to their colleagues, love it. We have a little bit more time if we want to take advantage of it, but I, I don't have any problem wrapping up early and giving some people time back in their day. But while we got Christine on, great time to take advantage of her expertise and her knowledge. So uh, we can definitely bring somebody else on live if you want to walk through the three to do's. Um, oh, somebody's hand is up. All right, <laughs> Joy, we will bring you on. Let me uh, find you here. Really quick, Kat, what activities are good to do leading up to a website launch? Similar to what we were telling Evie, it's kind of a pre-launch, right? So I'm not sure what your business is, but I would say identify those consumers and start trying to find them organically, right? Give them a call, go to find trade shows. In Facebook, you can look up events and there's free events where you can go and find those people. Joy. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I have a COVID uh, frustration problem in that um, um, this is for a small independent institute that offers community education. And um, so I had to wait for, you know, through COVID. And then it seemed like, okay, we could start with some small classes. And um, <clears throat> now with, uh, you know, with this renewed um, phase, um, people don't want to come to classes, nor would I want to offer them. And uh, so I've developed a way that we could meet outside in smaller groups, outside, inside. Of course, you have to deal with the weather, <clears throat> sort of made some contingencies for that. But how in, the, how in the world can you market that when you're starting to... to um, say you know oh don't worry we've got you know we've got indoor outdoor well maybe people don't want to be outside and the whole thing we were just getting ready to um you know to launch next month and and now it's just i mean do we forget about it or is there some other way to market it forget about marketing is that what you said or forget about your business I mean, yeah, I mean, it's been put off and put off and put off because of COVID. And, and now we figured out a way to, we could do it safely, but it's so complicated to try to explain that, that, you know, I don't know whether just to sort of give up, you know, for another six months or, or try to incorporate some, you know, okay. redesign our marketing to... So it's it's community education, you said, is classes? Like, yeah. is it something yeah. you can do through, through Zoom like we're doing? Uh, no, the whole purpose was um, for people to be able to get out and get together again and learn and, you know, be, be engaged because of having been so isolated through okay. COVID. That's the, whole, that's the whole reason that we started okay. it. Okay, so... First, everyone, should Joy give up? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Do not give <laughs> Thank up. Thank you, Joy. because I I mean, I actually kind of had, but I thought, well, I'll just come to this, you know, this because I, I signed up for it. Okay. I, I'm really okay, great. discouraged. So, so here's what I'm going to say, right? Again. To take it back to my fitness studio, we had to shut down as well. And then we had to start coming in and then people had to wear masks while they're working out. So number one is to show the value you're providing, right? Your consumers are going to want to come to this community education classes for a reason. So let's dig down and think, why do you want to come out, right? So your marketing should be saying, get out of the house, come and join us, right? You need to hit that spot of what's keeping people from coming out. Okay, that's number one. Why do I want to go to your community education classes? 
you know, maybe I want to go do some gardening. I have no more friends because I was stuck in COVID and, and nobody else wants to garden with me or whatever it is. Sorry, I don't know what exactly your community education classes are. Number two is now you got to like make everybody feel comfortable that they're going to be safe coming to your community education classes, right? So whether it's a hybrid or maybe you're saying, I'm limiting my classes to five spots. So now it's FOMO, right? I have two more spots left in my class for tomorrow. Who's coming, right? Maybe you offer the first class free so that they can come and feel comfortable, okay? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you limit it and you, and then you also have on your website or whatever your marketing is, you know, we clean everything. We're outdoors and we, we socially distance, but we still have fun. Now you've got pictures of your class where people are smiling and still having fun, right? Maybe you're requiring masks. You know, the people who don't want to come and do it just aren't going to come, right? You have to just let that go. People who don't feel comfortable are not going to go. But there are people, there are people at my fitness studio who don't wear masks and they come and they work out next to somebody. They do it. There's people who will do it. Okay. So you got to worry about those people, not the people who won't, aren't going to come. So you got to do your messaging to make people comfortable, right? Whether it's building FOMO, I'm limiting it to five people or 10 people or whatever it is. We're outside, you know, it's safe. Look at these pictures. And then you could do a testimonial. I don't know if you could get somebody, one of your customers who loves doing it and they feel safe. You could do a little testimonial and saying, yeah, I feel really, this has made me feel so great coming out after all this COVID crap, right? Whatever it is. So don't you dare give up. None of us are going to let you do that. But now you're pivoting your marketing. Now you're thinking your classes are smaller until people start feeling more comfortable. Maybe you're only offering certain ones because it's easier to, to uh, whatever activity it is, you know, for people to wear a mask, maybe it's not hiking or whatever it is. Right. So can you, is that helping to think about rethink oh. of how you're going to do that? Oh, tremendously. Yes. Okay. Cause when I'm just thinking to myself, then I think that I have to start over, but I love your ideas. Um, good, and, good. and, you know, a lot of it is engaged with um, the outside and outdoors, whether it's, art or something about nature or whatever we're learning a part of part of it is incorporating reconnecting with um you know the world exactly. outside our walls <laughs> so. exactly so joy go back to your why right why do i want to do this maybe the classes don't look like what you were wanting it to look like in the very beginning maybe you don't have you know 50 people in there that you want and like you know here john and julie both are are saying in the in the and tony in the chat right? You need, it's not fitting you right what now, but it's your purpose. Your purpose is to get people out. Even if it's a few, even if it's only five people for the first week, right? Maybe you have to give it all to them for free and give them this, you know, what first class free, if you buy the second one or whatever it is, bring a friend with you buy and your friend can come free, right? What you're trying to do is get people in the door using your services and now you're blowing up your Instagram or whatever it is, which I'm hoping you're doing Instagram and people are looking at it going, Oh, wow. I want to do that. Look, there's people out there having fun, right? I can bring my friend for free, right? You want to get people in there seeing your services, even if it's not profitable in the beginning, right? You just want people in there because we don't want you to give up. Okay. So I, I started a devoted Instagram site and then get pictures in there and exactly uh, oh okay i'm going to uh, tell you something my instagram people always tell me your classes are so full it's amazing i said actually they're not <laughs> there's only two classes a day out of six or seven that are full the others are only have a couple of people but on the instagram it looks like we're completely full every single class every single day so again that's your fomo and that's the power of your marketing you want people okay. to want to come Okay, what is FOMO? Did I miss that? Fear of missing out. Sorry, fear of missing out. So you want to build that. Everybody, you want you want your marketing to build people going, oh, wow, I want to do that, right? Oh. I want to go and do Joy's, can, you know, education thing because I'm stuck at home. You want them oh. to see that Instagram. I know I keep talking about Instagram, but that's the hugest thing, right? It could be your marketing also. It could be your ads, you want to build somebody's wants to come and do that because they look at it and they go, oh my gosh, 
I'm missing out. I need to sign up for that. I really want to do that. Okay. And the, the, other, the name of the is, is Shade Tree Institute for a reason, because it's, you know, the big shade tree and umbrella that can um, provide the opportunity and the, and the, you know, in the sort of sheltering space to, to do that. So I don't, I would like to figure out how to actually, you know, incorporate that. Um, but I, I don't know whether that should be part of my marketing or not. Well, it could be. And perhaps that's something with the, you know, the ACA's, what is it? The Digital Marketing Academy the that could help? Small Business Digital Academy. Small Business Digital Academy. Yeah. Um, you know, for you to narrow down your marketing and what your message looks like again, right? So in our P's, right? What is your, per- your problem and your product? Now, what is your purpose? Like your shade tree, right? Is now it's, it's, it's full circle with your, your purpose and your product and your service. Now your marketing is your values and your brands. Your marketing should be reflecting that. Absolutely. Okay. So the, so the thing is just to, to get started. Is that right? I mean, yes, not you need to have to do it the way I envision it being, but. Yeah, I mean, we're running out of time here, Joy. I um, I thank you so much for your questions. And please please tell everybody you're not giving up, number one. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What do you mean? No, no, we need to hear you say it. Like, I'm going to hold you accountable. All right, I won't give up. Good. Excellent. Good. Okay. The next thing I want you to do is sit down. The next thing I want you to do is sit down and just write three to-dos. Don't be overwhelmed. Like everybody, don't be overwhelmed with everything you have to do because we all have, if we had to make a to-do list, it would be 2000 things, right? But every day I want you to focus only on three, the three most important things you need to do for today. Three, that's it. That's a magic number. You hit those three, go take a walk. Pat yourself on the back for being an amazing entrepreneur and you're doing it, right? There's always going to be something to do. And don't get bogged down about, okay, now I got to do this. Now I got to do that. Now I got to do that. Three most important things to move your business forward. So today, what is that? Getting clarity on how you're going to figure out what your offering is now, Joy. Clarity on what you're going to start offering. Okay. Yes, that's the. (laughs) That's number one for you. Yeah. And then number two, trying to figure out your marketing step next. Now reflecting what your new promotion is, right? So three things, everybody, don't get bogged down because otherwise you'll never get anything done. And, and I don't have to mention COVID then, is that right? No, I mean, everybody, you know, COVID is everywhere. We don't need to mention it at all. No. Okay. Okay. Great. We all know it's there. It's annoying. I can't there. tell you how inspiring this is. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you. Well, we want to keep seeing you out there. Okay. So, I mean, unfortunately, I think we're almost out of time, Robert, right? Yeah, we are right at that time. So um, I think you have one more slide, Christina. Oh, do I? Oh, my gosh. I'm not very good at these slides, everybody. Oh, yes. All right. This is good for you, Joy, too, and everybody. It takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Again, 10 years. So make sure it's something that you really, really love doing and that you really feel like so you cannot give up. We, all of us, we will not let you give up. All the entrepreneurs, we're all together, right? Right. You will not give up as long as it's feeding into your purpose and your why. Everybody out there needs you. They need you specifically. Okay. It it doesn't matter if there's competitors out there. Someone needs you and your message. So I thank you all so very much for being here today. Thank you, Robert and Faith, for having me. And uh, I really wish all of you the best. Excellent. Thank you, Christina, for, for joining us. Great message. I want to thank all the participants for your interaction, uh, great interaction in the chat, great uh, feedback and stories that were shared by our participants um, supporting the other businesses. So thank you very much. Um, love when we have that kind of interaction. Uh, so please join us next Tuesday. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, we've got a great lineup of boot camps for 2022. So we're really excited about that. And uh, with that, we will go ahead and wrap up. It's right at 10 o'clock. We get right at our hour. So thank you for joining us. Again, thank you, Christina, for being with us. And we will see you guys next week. Have a great week. Bye.